All right, so what I wanted to talk about today and actually create a protocol for you guys is a knee pain pre-warm-up fix. Now, look, when I, when I talk about knee pain, here's what's really important to understand. The things that we're going to go through today are essentially like in conjunction with a lot of things. We, we understand that a lot of knee pain gets caused by not issues with the knee, not necessarily, right? A lot of times ankle mobility, and we've done it. There's an ankle protocol um, that you guys obviously have access to. There's also hips, which you're going to have access to the hip protocol, um, which affects so much of the knee, right? So if you, if you have lack of ankle mobility, if you have lack of hip mobility, if you're, you know, very anteriorly tilted, weight, anterior weight bearing, like those are all things that may, may affect your knee. It may also be posture. You'll see a lot of people have hyperextended knees and then they, sh they sit all day into that knee and over the top of it, that might be causing issues. So, I'm not here to say what's causing the issue because for that we have assessments and you can obviously also see our assessment protocol looking over these different things. But what, what I'm gonna go over today is you know what we found over the course of essentially almost like 15 years now um, that, that helps out and can strengthen the knees and, and help them get out of pain. So, you know, before, like I've had people always go like, well, no, my, you know, my knee still hurts and I've done some of this stuff and it's like, yes, absolutely. Like, you may have an issue that you want to check out with a physical therapist, you want to uh, check out with a doctor, um, you know, but like most of these things uh, are going to be great for most people. And, you know, the rule is like, hey, if it hurts, like there's pure pain, you stop, right? Now, what I'm going to do, so I, I, as you guys have seen, like I love body tempering. Um, it always understand if you don't have access to something like this, well, I certainly recommend that you, you know, you get it, but you could use a foam roller. You could use, you know, all types of, I mean, there's, there's different tools that we have that are all foam rollers that are based around, I would say, you know, you got the regular ones and you got ones that got creases that can really get into the quad, right? That have cuts that can just kick and kind of get that soft tissue in fashion, break it up more, I should say, release it more, right? So there's, there's a lot of different tools that you can use and I'll share a bunch of them with you today. But for, for me, like, it, you know, this has really been something phenomenal as far as uh, getting a true release slash reset. And for most people with knee pain, you know, what you'll find is that they have more tension in certain, certain areas that creates stress on the knee. So one of those areas obviously is just the quad. And uh, you guys get to see me being a little bit of a, a little bit of pain. What's great about this is that I can control. I can control where it hurts. I can control you know, lifting this up a little bit, getting a little less pressure. But I'm gonna find these, usually like right on the top of the quad, you're gonna have, you know, rectus femoris, that lateral quad. And remember, I can kind of slide this further up. I can tilt my leg, I can find these angles. So right there, it's spicy, I can push down. Right, and what's gonna, woo, that's very, very spicy right there. So, you know, there's kind of like no uh, pure rule to this. So you could be on there for, 20 seconds or for two minutes uh, but what you're looking for what you're feeling for is you'll notice like it'll be tight it'll be gritty and won't, and then all of a sudden it'll just let go right? I'll just start letting go and I'm not gonna go into the science behind that um, it's just we're looking for the result here of like release okay um, sometimes which if somebody has a hyperextended knee will bend it and put something like a, um, a sand bell or something below the knee to keep it comfy um, and I don't have any, that issue, so I'm, so I'm okay with this. And then you just move around, finding these spots, right, that are really, really, really gritty. You'll, you'll usually find that closer to the kneecap on that lateral aspect right here on the outside. You know, you go here, you're going to start feeling like pretty, pretty nasty stuff. Uh, and just imagine, like, from mo you know, if somebody's a beginner starting off, uh, maybe they can just do the, the roller and they're, you know, facing down, putting pressure on it. Uh, but, you know, this just gets a faster result, a better result faster. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to, right? So I'd move it around and just get that release. And I do that on both sides or on a knee that, that hurts. Uh, second thing I do, and remember this is, you know, um, and I have no affiliation with, you know, I, I, I like the products that I like. So this is from Kombuka Strength Lab, Chris Duffin, they do a great job. I think Rogue now starts selling body tempering tools that go from 50 to, you know, 150, 200 pounds. Um, but like I said, uh, to me, it's always just been about the result. Like, what is getting the best results? What makes sense based, you know, from a sci scientific standpoint and a results-driven standpoint? Uh, so now I'm going to go into this kind of 90-90 position, 
just because once again, like body temperance is great. You know, somebody else doing it on you is, is fantastic. If you have a partner coach, um, obviously, or your team, if you learn this, I highly recommend it from Donnie Thompson or the Kabuki Strength Lab. I'm gonna go now on to the adductor because the adductor, whew, and the VMO, uh, same thing, right? I'm gonna find that spot and found it real quick, okay? Just a lot of tension. And remember, just breathing through this, I can lift it up, put a little less tension on, I can let it go, I can push it down, I can do a lot of these different things. Uh, but, you know, if you get on a tissue and it's feeling like my tissue's feeling right now, guess what? You know, that's, that's probably like really, really well done steak. And, and we don't want it to feel like well done steak. We want it to feel like more like medium rareish or, right? We want to just get that release, okay? So same thing, you know, 20, like this would probably be 30 seconds would be enough on, on that spot. Sometimes you might want to go as much as a minute, right? I'm going to go up higher in the adductor. I'm going to find, notice I can roll, oof, find another spot there. I can self-regulate, especially this one. I can self-regulate it, which is great, okay? So you kind of get the idea here. So a lot of times, you know, if we want, uh, and, and, and this will be done on a separate, it could be done on a separate day. It could be done on a day that, I'm just gonna let that go right there. It could be done on before the, like before the training session, and then you're gonna go into your mobility, which all of the things that we'll, we'll show. So uh, re remember, now we kind of got the release of VMO, adductors, lateral quad, right? There's less stress usually on the kneecap. Uh, especially if you have kind of like this medial knee pain, you know, patellar issues, um, which we'll go over in a little bit as well. Number two, like then from there we're gonna go into, imagine this block like right here, TFL glute mean, okay? That's usually pretty gritty and uh, a reason for, I would say, knee pain as well. And so what we're gonna do is find that spot, okay? So I'm gonna position myself in here and bend this back knee now. Check this. like. You're gonna know when you're on it, right? If people go like, well, where should I go? Trust me. So if there's no tension, if there's no kind of like feeling of ickiness, well, you probably you don't need any work there, right? But I found that sucker, and like I said, TFL is like, a, it's almost like a square up here at the top of your IT band, hip. And so from here, I'm gonna drive into extension, ooh, and just release that sucker. And trust me, I feel it. So I had a bunch of leg work yesterday, so I'm this, is, this is coming into play really, really nicely, right? And I'm gonna move around a little bit once again. Remember, this is, this is part of like where you go by feel, right? I'm, I'm finding those spots. Oop, found another one, right? Flex, extend, keep the abs on. I like to push, I would say, my hand into the ground here, like a, kind of almost like a side plank. And I'm just getting that all nice and opened up. Same thing. Glute mean right here, Whew. right? And you're just running 10, 15, and just finding, like I said, you'll, you'll see, it'll go from, oh man, that's, ten, that's a lot of tension to like feels better, 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 okay? From there, I like going to think like lateral quad, right? So kind of like this side, you, almost like you're thinking like you're trying to separate that muscle from the bone. I mean, that's your kind of thought process here, right? And so I'm gonna find these spots again and once, look, if you may have gotten such good great work done with soft tissue release with rollers or, or the body tempering that you, you don't need as much of this. But trust me, like usually this kind of pinpoints these spots and like this is an active mobility ball. See, so I'm, fi I'm finding that kind of like edge of that muscle, Oof. right? And we're just gonna go get some flexion, extension of the knee right here. Same thing, like I'm just feeling, you know, think pin and stretch kind of technique here. Whew. Right, and I just work. I just work my way up on those, on those spots that you know I really feel the most. Okay, so think 10 to 15 runs through this, and this can be. Remember, guys, like like I'm going to show you quite a few things. So this can be a protocol that you do, you know, before training. But right now, you might see me take quite a bit of time in doing this, but you know, it, it may not take as much time. Uh, you could just do four or five exercises. Maybe you do this as a recovery protocol if you really if it's really bugging you on your days off, or you could do this and then do upper body training, you know, warm up and do upper body training, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Make sure you ask us in the comments, ask us inside the group of you know how this can be uh, this can be implemented, whether it's like larger group, one-on-one -on -one, athletes, whatever it may be. 
right? But now, like, we've actually spent a good amount of time, I would say, breaking that stuff up. One thing I'll say, uh, this is a tool that you guys will see in the in videos for uh, hip health or low back protocols as well, and it's the Sewrite. Once again, I, you know, I don't get anything from promoting. I just like the tools that, that I like. They have an effect. And there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this one, but literally the Sewrite is made to just lay on here and find kind of like that spot by the ASIS where you're just really digging into the psoas. And I'm just laying down on it and I'm just gonna breathe, right? So, and you'll, you'll know, like when you're on it, once again, it's another one of those things where full exhalation, full inhalation. And then when I exhale, like literally try to pull that sole right into your hips. And same thing, I like just doing breathing on this for minutes, for minutes. And, and, like, and like I said, you know, why, why does releasing that psoas and the hip flexors, you know, make a difference? And I'll show you guys some other tricks when it comes to releasing that psoas. But a lot, you know, if, if, if we're in that if really, really tight hips pulling us back into that interior tilt, that, like, means I can't get full extension of the hip. My glute doesn't fire pelvis is not in a good position and it's going to create more stress on the knee right so all my, and remember we're sitting all day right we're sitting in this slouch position most people are sitting a lot you know in this kind of flex position with their knees back with their toes pointed so this just all shortens up so we got to make sure that we're able to open this stuff up so the drills that you just saw is going to help with that too so you can fully actually extend the hip you know so all of the stuff i'm showing is also kind of getting you out of low back pain as well. So with that said, we're going to kind of move along here to something that we do with a lot of different issues. You know, when it's, whether it's hip, low back, certainly knee, and it's direct this femoral stretch. So whether it's a chair at home, you know, if you're, if, if you're in a gym, obviously, um, I like to put the pad down. Most clients, uh, like I said, if they, their knees scrape down on the ground, they, it's just going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to do anything crazy, but it's going to be uncomfortable. And so here, I, I like positional breathing. And there's a number of things that I, I, I pay attention to. Number one is, is my foot aligned with my, my butt and my hip? Like, is it in line? Because you'll see a lot of this, like where, you, you know, you'll have weird angles, foot goes in because somebody's tight. So we want to align that foot. We want to find that spot. From here, I'm going to be kind of like in this 90 position. The other thing that I like to pay attention to is, you know, we work on a lot is, like, when you get into this 99 position, a lot of people's hips will just be offset. So I like to push this hip, like this is a Dr. Mark Cheng uh, cue that he taught me was push the butt cheek to the opposite hip. So I'm gonna take this butt cheek and push it to my opposite hip without this hip sliding out, right? So hip stays in place, watch. I push my glute to my adductor, to my groin right. And now all of a sudden I'm level. And just doing that, the stretch here, bigger. Because now my hips are nice and aligned. Number two, I'm just gonna start squeezing my glute as hard as I can, okay? Stay nice and tall. And I'm gonna, instead of counting seconds, I do breaths. So here, I'm going to breathe out. And then try to breathe in through my nose, deep into my belly here. And again. For me, I, I'm pretty good here, so now I'm gonna lean back a little bit and get a little bit bigger stretch. And again, nice and tall, breathe out. Breathe in deep into my pocket here. Hold it, and so we're doing positional breathing. The next step here would be getting my arm up and across, and I can have some support here. I usually have a, a mobility stick here, and I'm gonna reach, but I'm gonna, like I said, le reach and open up this lateral side while I keep doing the same thing. Squeeze my glute, exhale, breathe into my belly, and again, and keep reaching. All right, so we're opening up that lateral side obliques, rectus femoris. Remember, when the knee bends and, and extends, 
we get uh, rectus femoris and psoas stretch as we're reaching with that psoas stretch. But long story short, we're opening up all this stuff that's usually short and wound up, okay? And that in itself, like this is one of those, um, I would say drills that everybody can do really well with if, if they have low back issues. And what the breathing does, because most times people say just get in that position and just kind of stretch and people hyperextend their back doing it, right? When I exhale fully, my rib cage comes down, my abs turn on, my pelvis gets put in a good position, right? So I'm not cheating, right? I'm in a good position and now I get a true stretch here. So we're working on breathing, which is ph phenomenal. Like we've obviously shared a lot of different things on how breathing affects training, posture, uh, your nervous system, you know, sympathetic, parasympathetic. And so now we get an opportunity, instead of doing 30 seconds, I'll say five to six breaths, full exhalation, you know, four seconds, four second hold, four second inhale, four second hold, like box breathing, right? Uh, which is also a great drill to just do, I would say, in the evenings if you got a long day and stuff like that. So, you know, think about those, uh, like, you can use this anywhere. And I highly, like, encourage you, like, if you do have, like, knee nagging pains and, uh, and, and tightness and inflammation, you know, doing this frequently, meaning, like, hey, do it at least, try, try to do it daily, okay? Now, from here, like, this is the second thing that I, I, I really uh, like it. I've kind of... Uh, thought this through as far as how to do it with assistance because a lot of people can't do it without assistance but it's a quad stretch um, this is a great exercise to me as far as like you can do this without without uh, without support but it is it is much more challenging so imagine me not having any support and, and I've worked on this so I can control back lean back put my hands back squeeze my glutes open up those quads, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, even pull myself back up, right? And that's, that's a great drill as well, and has its place. But for many people, that's very, very challenging, and that's okay. So we get a TRX, and we use that TRX while I'm still squeezing my glutes as hard as I can. I can actually pull a little bit on a, the TRX to create core tension, so my hips are in a good position. And now, once again, I'm feeling that huge stretch in my quads, and I can be just breathing here. And now I can go for a minute, 30 seconds, two minutes. Great thing is, like, if it becomes uncomfortable, as in the stretch becomes too uncomfortable, just pull myself out of it. I can pause for a second, I can do multiple reps. So a good start is doing like three, four, five reps of 10 seconds. Uh, but like I said, there is no kind of golden rule here, but by itself, I've already now kind of feel a lot more, whoa, okay, hips are open between that and this. And I feel like this gets a tr like a, a big true quad stretch. Now, once again, if you have any type of knee restriction as you're going down, it gets blocked, you've had any type of surgeries, you know, this may not be a good fit. Always, like I said, just use, uh, use your int intuition and kind of pain as a source. Like we don't want uncomfortable, fine. Pain, not okay, right? So, so let's just keep always that in mind. From here, one of the things that we want to work on is, so if you've ever been to a, a gym and worked on like knee, like I would say knee extensions, right? And people will go like, oh man, that hurt my knee. Now look, I don't think knee extensions are horrible and on a machine. It's just, it depends on who's doing them and why. But one of the drills that we use for, for knee rehab and knee strengthening is called a terminal knee extension, right? TKE, TKE short for terminal knee extension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back as far as I can, I mean, put it this way, depending on how heavy the band is, uh, you know, this, the resistance is gonna be different on this. So I wanna be level. The mistake that a lot of people make is they'll, They'll be kind of offset, you know, the hips will be, won't be aligned. So I want to be aligned with my hips here, okay? I want to be aligned with my hips, and I'm going to let this band pull me, okay? Now, I'm not going to let it pull my hip. So notice, it's just pulling my knee, okay? Pulling my knee forward, and now I'm going to extend, right? I'm going to extend the knee. I like to think about stomp my heel down into the ground. Boom. And that fires up my VMO. I mean, my whole quad, but my VMO, like, Crazy. And like I said, 
Uh, weakness of the VMO for a lot of people, especially after injuries and, and, and different issues, you'll see that most of them are weak. You'll get a lot of like overuse on that lateral side, like VMO doesn't really work. Single leg training is great for, like I would say quality rep single leg training is great for strengthening the VMO, but this is a fantastic exercise. So watch, I'm gonna let it go, stop. And like I'm literally punching that heel into the ground. I feel that VMO fire like crazy. From here, you're probably like, oh, that looks real easy. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm firing that glute, stomping that heel down. I'm feeling that VMO. Like I like this for 12 to 15 reps per side, per set. Great, 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 great exercise. And once again, like compared to a lot safer, I mean, very, very, very safe um, compared to like a, we'll say a gym knee extension where a lot of times uh, things can go very, very wrong depending on what's going, uh, going on with your knee. Okay, so that's another drill that we have here that I like to use. From there, uh, this is another drill. And once again, like when, you're, when we're going through this, know that like if there's something that you're like, eh, I don't know yet, just don't do it, right? Like you have a lot of options here. Like just the things that we went through, I promise you like you go through this, most of it will feel a lot better. Same thing if you're like, hey, I, I don't want to do body tempering, cool, use a you know, foam roller with a crease that really gets into that lateral quad, you know, use a foam roller that really gets into the adductor, you can still get that work done. It doesn't have to be maybe as, as aggressive, right? Even though the things that I showed you are completely safe, especially if you, like I said, are, are, are smart with just where you're putting it, like you, you use your own intuition as far as how much uh, pressure and tension you want to take, right? From here, this is a, a foot elevated kind of pistol squat, but it's, it's, it's knee dominant, like we're really working that VMO once again, getting that control of knee. So I'm gonna have that one foot hanging. I can do this without my hands. I like people to start with just some support so they can focus on that leg. And from here, I'm going to just kind of go down, push my knee forward, and slowly tap my foot on the ground. But I'm keeping the tension on this side, and then I'm pushing back through. Now the things that I'm looking for here is, I want to feel every part of my hip, oh sorry, of my foot, right? Uh, you know, no rolling out, no collapsing. And I like to start with firing that glute up on my left side. The reason why is because a lot of times people here, they'll just see how my, my, my hip just like flew out of place, right? So they'll be here and they'll start and their hip will just fall out and then they're doing this and it's bone on bone or, or they really feel tension in their TFL. So I, I noticed that like when I squeeze this left glute and en engage my abs and grab this a little bit, my hip is now in a good position. And from here, I'm still squeezing my glute, but I'm gonna let that knee fall forward. Ooh, I'm feeling that VMO work. Now I'm pushing my whole foot into the ground, boom. Okay, again. Glutes on, right, my hip is in place now, and push through my whole foot, right? And once again, it feels like, you know, oh, that's not that tough of a drill, but when you do it well, you're constantly pushing that foot into the ground, you're, you're squeezing your glute, Right? You're, tr you're making sure that the knee falls right in the middle of that foot as you go down. Now we're strengthening that, the, the muscles around the knee and the tendons around the knee. Okay? Very, very, very important. Okay? So from, from here, like now you kind of notice, you know, because some people will say, well, like if I do some of these things, they hurt. That's why we kind of go through a protocol, right? And we go do soft tissue first, we release some things. And like I said, this works in conjunction. It's very important. If you have knee pain, all of the hip mobility protocols from improving your hip health go in conjunction with this, as do ankle mobility drills, right? And because those two are gonna help out a lot as well as strengthening your core, right? Like, and I know I'm kind of going a little bit over the place, but it's important to understand that these things are in conjunction. What we like to do is create these protocols so that you, you can use for yourself, you can use them with clients and, and have something to work with, uh, like I said, because You'll, you'll certainly look great when you're like, oh my God, like this is feeling so much better, right? Uh, and as always, right, if somebody's had any type of injury, like we we'll always, I mean, we have like Dan, Dan Swinsco right there, physical therapy. Um, if, if something's off or a person's, uh, you know, been dealing with stuff, we got surgery, like we always refer to, to him and we work together and collab collaborate on it. But it's also where we've gotten a lot of these protocols working together to create them. Um, with a t one of the top physical therapists in, in Washington State so that we can help people strengthen or rebuild or rehab um, after injuries, okay? 
from here, you know, a big part of, I would say most people are so, uh, I would say, I, I hate saying the word quad dominant, but overuse tightness, right? So think, overuse doesn't mean stronger necessarily, it means triggered up and they're not functioning right. But so this is a hip thrust variation where it's a two up, one down, and we're gonna work on the eccentric portion of it. So hamstrings, glutes here. So my upper back is gonna be here. I'm gonna turn my abs on. Okay, I'm gonna drive up. So two legs up, then I'm gonna bring that knee up and slowly, five seconds, at least three, but a lot of times I like five. Come back down, push back up again. Knee comes up, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, and I'm pushing that foot into the ground, so I'm creating tension. Three, two, one, right? And we do that for somewhere around eight to 12, because once again, this is body weight, and we're just working on strengthening that posterior, that backside. Remember, we can always use, I would say, use more weight when it comes to, um, going negative, like eccentric, then we can concentrically. So once again, another safe exercise here. Okay, so you kind of see what we've been doing, right? So we, we strengthen, I would say, that VMO. Like we release, we strengthen that VMO, we work that posterior chain. Now I'm gonna show you a couple more uh, things that I've actually uh, shared before in a working out like jumpers, knee patellar tendonitis. Now, once again, I, I've, I've posted some videos and people are like, well, you know, this is what, like, if I do this, it hurts. And the, the kicker is, number one, every person is an individual. Uh, and you always gotta look at things in conjunction. Did, did they do their soft tissue work? Did they do all the other things that matter when it comes to improving knee health? And, but these are, remember, that a lot of times we have, when a knee is not aligned, when the front and back aren't equally strong, when we don't have tendon strength, right, we start like running into problems. So one of the things that people don't think about is actually strengthening those tendons through those full ranges of motion. So what I'm gonna do is gonna show you guys a couple of drills here that you may look at and go like, whoa, this isn't this gonna hurt my knee? And it, the, the answer is it depends, right? What I'm gonna do is actually go through this, push my low back into the ground, I'm sorry, into the wall. Notice I have like this uh, kind of, my heels are up on a wall. And from there, I'm slowly, and this is like really controlled. I'm gonna push my knees forward and slow, 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 slow to as much range of motion as I can get. And then I'm gonna push back up again, slow, 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 slow. And what I'm doing here is obviously strengthening, okay, every muscle around the knee and the tendons. Okay, and you may not be able to get there, but get to wherever you can without pain, right? There's a big difference between discomfort and pain, and we're doing this. And like, that's getting my quads burning. But, you know, the thing is that you're going to get into these awkward positions, and we have to train these awkward positions for the knee. Most people don't do any training specific to uh, making the knee healthier, making sure that the hip is aligned, making sure that all the muscles around are strengthened. Right, and back in the day, Steve Maxwell, like I really, really worked on this a lot when I was playing basketball. Learned this from St Steve Maxwell was just sissy squats for slow control tempos or, or high reps. And it's very similar to this, where I'd go on my toes and I'd be doing sets of 50 for these and bring my arms out and slow, you know. So this is the slow-mo version, where it's like I'm gonna go all the way down. It's actually strengthening your feet too and I'd usually do them with no shoes on. Right now I'm just showing you guys with shoes. And slowly up, right? Oop. And you can see it's challenging. That's why you could be here, you know, holding on to a rig, slow, letting those knees fall forward, all the way, slowly coming up. All right, so that would be my slow-mo version. And then you have like these breathing squats where you can go faster on this. Once again, you can have support here because it's also a ton of like right now I feel my feet because right my feet are, especially my toes, super extended, working, pushing into the ground. But most people say, well, those are bad for you, right? But the truth is, is that like, we're not using super, super heavy loads. We're not, you know, squatting with a ton of weight on our back. We're using a body weight 
to strengthen every range of motion in that tissue, right? So it's very, very important. So with that said, you know, uh, there's a lot of different, this, this is why like there's a choice because a, a lot of times if I'm like, here are these three exercises, right? You might be like, ah, I don't know if that one works for me. Uh, so here's an, like one of the, the, the safest things to do is do an isometric. So as we were just on the wall with the squats, right? Like this is a great way to strengthen certain positions. So imagine that there's a certain area that bugs you, right? So if you got, if you got down to here and you're like, ah, this is really like hurt. But if you went up a little bit and shifted your foot position, you're like, you know what? That doesn't hurt. Great. All right, let's go into this position. And we're just gonna push into the ground. Slightly, we're gonna hold that, right? And if, can you go a little bit lower? Okay, cool. It doesn't hurt, great. Push that whole foot into the ground. Do 20, 25, 30, like we're just trying to progress the length, even up to a minute, right? And the great thing about carryover of strength and tissue is about it goes 15 degrees up and down. So after three, four, five weeks, you may be able to go like, oh man, this doesn't hurt. Cool, let's hold it there and progress it again, right? But th these are very safe, right? As isometrics are very, very, very safe. So now we're here and just holding and strengthening, okay? Once again, this is, uh, you kind of saw that full range of motion, strengthening the tissues. Now we got isometrics, we can push it a little bit more as far as like, time goes from here we're going to go to two more that are i feel great exercises to uh kind of improving the tendonitis and, and a jumper's knee and one of them is here and we're going to go kneeling ground taps with the knees so once again you kind of see this position here where i'm on my toes and my knees are forward I'm going to have some support. And the thing is, you can have a TRX, you can have a rig, whatever, whatever it may be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to control with my, with, my, with my legs as I'm going to come down, slowly tap the knees, and bring it back up. Okay? And I, eventually, you could do this unsupported. So, abs are on. And I'm coming all the way back. Okay? Reach. Coming all the way back. Once again, we're strengthening those knees in these positions that most people never train them, right? End ranges. So obviously my knee is completely in an end range. And then and it, the, the, the foot comes into play here too, which is great because you're actually mobilizing the foot as well. But we're bringing that down and controlling it back up and you're strengthening those tissues, right? So just think of it in the simplest of ways. You can only build muscle or strengthen tissues, things like tendons too as well, beyond, beyond the muscle, in areas that you can activate them, right? So we do soft tissue work, we do breathing, we do all these things to get the joints in the right positions and then we get them to these end ranges and we train them there. But we're obviously training them with, you know, just body weight and smaller lows at first and building that up. Because guess what? When you're playing a sport, when people are just, you know, playing the sport of life, you're going to have them do stuff that's awkward. They fall, they trip, they pick stuff up and they're gonna get into these positions. But if they're not trained, they're gonna hurt, right? So a lot of times when people are like, well, my knees hurt right now. And it's like, okay, cool, we got some work to do. And first of all, you know, I would say activating some things that have been dormant, right? Like some, uh, releasing some things that have been overactive to get them to where they need to be, okay? And so last but not least, I'm actually gonna steal a plate real quick over here. And this is a two, uh, two up, one down pistol squat. We're gonna elevate, we're gonna elevate that heel a little bit. So we put a little extra emphasis on the knee, which is a knee, making a knee dominant. So I'm going to lower myself. Once again, I'm gonna let that knee fall forward. I'm gonna go down as low as I can go, as low as I can go, I'm trying to go to about parallel, bring that other leg in, help myself up. Once again, this is just the eccentric portion. We're much stronger here, right? So I'm gonna control. I'm looking for that knee to go right in the middle of the toe, right? So I want that knee to track the toes. I don't, I don't want it to be crazy out, I want my, my ankle and foot to roll, right? 
I'm gonna let that knee fall forward, fall forward, and come back up. All right, same thing, we can do that for eight to 10 reps. And those are all strength and exercises of the knee. Now, if you watch this and say, hey, like I've seen a lot of stuff where, you know, for, to improve knee health, we do hip mobility. Absolutely. All right, this is a separate video because there is a hip mobility video and a hip health video that goes really well in conjunction with this. And as you guys see our warm-ups in our team training models, our small groups, like I said, that you get inside of the group, uh, you'll have a lot of this included. But this, what I want to do is give you protocol so when people come in and they're struggling with things, you can take them through stuff and trust there's no better way than getting somebody to buy in. When I say buy in, buy into your philosophy, buy into your principle, buy into your gym, buy into your coaching, then when you do something with them and they get a result right away, right? So when we get, you guys saw me in the ocean shoot the shoulder protocol, somebody comes in you work and they got shoulder issues and you work with them for 45 minutes on you know, assessing them and then doing some shoulder mobility protocols and strengthening protocols and they leave and they go, oh my goodness, like I don't feel any pain right now. That's, that, that is buying, that is buying at the highest level. And that is exactly what you're looking for from, like I said, these protocols that we put together. Um, like I said, this, this world is wide and deep and that's why we're here to, like when you ask questions, we'll, we'll, we'll share more things with you. But we created like some of the best stuff that we have to put together that you guys can quickly use with people and get a ton out of it. You can use this stuff in workshops, you can put together, I say, seminars around these things and use this information and get a lot of value to the people, to your clients, to the community, to the marketplace. With that said, like I said, that's our get out, you know, knee pain, fix, pre-warm up, uh, and hopefully you also got all the kind of connecting stuff that we talked about, the hips, the low back, the core, the, uh, I would say the ankles that all go and, and coincide with this. But use this, let us know, you know, let us know your results, let us know if you got any questions around it and anything else, we'd love to help you out. See you guys next time.